Okay, let's be honest. Do any of you even really remember what this thing is? It's from Thor 2, the bad one. They say it's not wise to keep two Infinity Stones so close together. Well, the Tesseract is no longer safe on Asgard, and this is the Reality Stone, or more commonly known as the Ether from Thor 2 The Dark World, the one that everybody kind of skipped and you probably didn't stay for the post credit scenes, where this makes a really brief appearance as the Asgardians, I don't remember their names, they're, I don't know, the big beefy, you know, bearded dude, hands it over to the Collector, and then the Collector has it, and then eventually Thanos goes and grabs it during Infinity War, and you know, nowhere is destroyed. This is a little bit of a complicated one because the ether is a liquid gooey thing. Some, someone needs to stop saying you. This was a pretty cool little project. I love how this thing came out, especially if you know what it is and you watched all the post credit scenes. But what I love most about it is if you open the inside right here, sitting inside is the reality stone. Let's take a look and I'll show you how I made it. Okay, so like the other videos, I'm gonna kind of give you a little bit of a construction breakdown as much as I can, because a lot of these are fused and glued together. I'm gonna go over how I made the electronics work. We'll also give a quick look at the files, but they're pretty simple. Now this is the first uh, Infinity Stone holder that is actually a free file available on Thingiverse. And as always, I'll link that right down below so you guys can go and make this. And this is a little bit more of a complicated print, not as complicated as the Scepter, but there are a lot of little parts to it. And I did cheat and I made two modifications to it. Instead of printing one of these, uh, two of these bars, which the files will give you a piece here and a piece here, I was able to refuse them. And then I was able to make my own third or fifth piece by stretching and rescaling this little clear cover. I made a new cover for the inside. Now this isn't supposed to come apart. I modified it to come apart. This is all supposed to be glued together, all pretty and happy. And then I put some magnets in there to also help hold it together. So at its core, this is just a cover. And then these handles go together. There's just some pins in there. You can friction fit them, you can glue them. I think if I pull hard enough, I can take this cover off, but I don't need to now. Now, originally I had a pressure fit system, a little limiter switch that sat here. And that's what this is a remnant of. And every time I put the cover on, it would hit the limiter switch, turn on, turn off, turn on. Very similar to some other electronics I've done. However, I went with an idea even simpler, magnetic, uh, magnetic electrical contacts. Now this is just a piece of metal that's magnetic sitting on the back of the infinity stone. And it's hard to see two little metal wires here. Now these are, this wire system right here is just an electrical circuit. If these two wires touch, the lights turn on. And that's all this little magnet is doing. It's connecting those two contacts. So when they touch, it allows electricity to pass through. And then when I remove the stone, they turn off. Underneath, it's a little bit more of a mess. I do plan on cleaning it up eventually, but really it's not the end of the world. This is a 11.7 rechargeable LiPo battery. Now, because it is such a large battery, it doesn't last as long because this is a 12 volt lighting system. I don't recommend this. I didn't have any red LEDs at the time, so I went and grabbed an old red LED from some car tail lights and I made it work. But like always, this is a completely rechargeable LiPo battery you can get on Amazon, plug it into the wall via USB, and I can still disconnect it, charge it, swap it, do whatever I need to. And then the wires run down. Now the files do have a little battery compartment in here, so you can go and put in whatever batteries you want. There's holes, there's a bunch of stuff in here to kind of utilize and uh, use to your advantage, but I just made the LiPo battery fit down there and then I ran the wires in through it. Now, if we come into here, I can pull this cover out and reveal a very, very simple system. Here are the wires and I made sure I put a connector on them in case I ever wanted to do this and take them off. And that's all it is. It's a simple circuit. So this, this is basically just a switch. When these two wires connect, this circuit closes up. Now this plate right here is just these clear covers stretched out until it fit perfectly in there. This is honestly probably one of the simpler circuits I've ever done. Here's the battery. The positive goes up to the LED lights that are sitting inside. And then the negative, instead of going right to the battery, comes up, goes to one of the metal pins, and then the other metal pin connects to the battery. So right when the stone sits down and the metal connects these two, the light turns on. Now, you don't have to use a 12 volt car battery. I don't actually recommend it. It's hard to tell, but it's suspended with a plastic bracket I made from some leftover print material, some raft. So the LEDs are sitting right here, right around the, uh, the covers. Now you could use 
some cosplay LED eyes if you want. These are red ones, and if you throw some batteries in there and kind of tuck them in, you could probably get a little bit of a glow too, obviously once you position them a little bit better. You can use some generic LED strips and just throw them in there. These are three volt LED strips, you get them on Amazon. This I thought was pretty cool too. I got this for another project, I bet you can kind of tell what. And it's a chasing candle effect, but it has different modes like that. The battery's all self-contained, there's a switch on the side, and if you were to find a red one per se, you could put that in there and have the entire thing glow with a whole self-contained system. So sometimes looking for pre-built electronics can really pay off in the end, and as you've seen on my channel, I use them for a lot of stuff. You don't have to make all your own circuits. Sometimes uh, technology and the internet, and Amazon especially, or the dollar store, answers your call for you. As for the magnets all hiding around, I embedded some magnets in here, now, if you're melting magnets into plastic, do not heat the magnet. If you put a magnet on something and heat it with a soldering iron, you're gonna ruin the magnetism. All I would do is I would take my soldering iron tip, the same way I plastic weld, heat the plastic, and as it starts to cool just a little bit, I'll push the magnet in there, very carefully, don't burn yourself, and I'll start to blow on it real a lot to cool it down as quickly as possible, and it seems to work. I have four magnets there, four magnets around the corner, and they hold and line up just fine. Now you can play with whatever attachment methods you want. I tried a hinge system at one point. I wasn't really a big fan of it, but that's the entire system. And this entire thing's construction, once you see the files, will kind of make more sense. But basically, there's the base down here, these four metal rods, metal, and then these covers slot into it. Now I had a lot of trouble with the fitment getting these covers to slide in because the dimensional accuracy of my prints wasn't perfect. So getting them to slide in was a little bit of a problem. But if you take a soldering iron and open up the channels or cut them or sand them, they'll slide in just fine. There's never a reason to take them back out. So once they're in there, they're in there and you're good to go. All, these top panels and bottom panels are all the same print. Um, it's, you know, you just print eight of these, four of these, four of these, top bottom handles. And that's it. So let's pop in, take a look at the file real quick, and we'll put this thing back together. So when you download this, you're gonna get a bunch of parts, but not all the parts that you need. Like I said before, you're gonna need to print a couple uh, repeats. Now first, let's take a look at this handle. Pretty simple print. I would orient this up in a really high quality. As for the handle and the bottom plate, print them however you want, and you're gonna need four of these little pegs that go into to all these little sections. Handle's very simple. Now, I guess I lied before, I'm moving up to these top covers. Now, I printed these two um, in just a normal PLA. I think I ended up using like a gray or a black. I don't remember what I print, colors I printed this in. But these, you don't want any light to come through these. So print them however normally you need to, five, 10, 20% infill. I think I used like five, but make sure you stand them up for the absolute highest quality. You want these to look good, and there's tons of little detail in here. Um, I really didn't use any supports. I know it seems like it wants to support a lot. It didn't, just lower your angle. And then these little covers, the ones for the LEDs, again, print them the same way, just like that, standing up. But this is gonna be printed in a clear PLA, or you can use a, some type of resin printer if you have access to that. Clear PLA is not actually clear, it's more translucent. Print it in a 0% infill. Again, a high quality really pays off in this, and then they'll fit in and the lights will shine through them. Now, as for that top cover that I made for this project, that was a very simple, just doing some measurements of the top panel and then ununiformly scaling this. So right here, we have that. Now we know the dimensions are 53 by nine. Now, all we have to do is stretch this out until it was roughly 90 by 90 is the numbers I ended up going with and that just barely fit and you can always trim it if you need to and this is exactly how I printed that little cover. Now you can probably print one of these with more texture if you wanted to. Just make sure again you rescale it. This is 82 by 90 currently. So just do a little bit of math and you can make your own cover for it. Now the base, again, pretty easy. Uh, here's the little battery cover that sits underneath here. If you so choose to print that and have that in there, totally up to you. I printed them standing up just like this and the details on the top came out. Standing this up on the side would be a little complicated with all these little uh, the little pegs or little ball things on the ends. So I would definitely recommend printing them like this and you have no issues. Now, in case you're wondering at this point, everything here does fit on an Ender 3. The biggest part you're gonna print is this base and you can see it sits right in the middle, no problem at all. Even the bar that I'm gonna show you how to recombine fits on an Ender 3. So this is this will be a pretty, it'll be a pretty long print depending on how many parts you need to and how big your print um, build volume is, but you should be totally fine with that. Now, 
as you can see, there are the two little pegs here, the top and the bottom, but I was able to fuse them into one. So if you go into mesh mixer and drop the bottom cover, bottom corner, and then drop the top corner, it'll ask you to append or replace, hit append, hit no. I don't know why hitting yes doesn't work, just hit no, and it's gonna rebuild the arm into one part. But first you need to do one more thing. Select one, hold shift, select the other, and as long as you have edit selected over here, go ahead, hit combine. Now this is one part, export it, blah, 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 blah. Come back to downloads, drop it in, and there we go. Exported and rebuilt as one solid piece that you can print. I don't know why that part's actually cut. Uh, maybe just uh, if he was using a resin printer or something, they just if the build volume wasn't high enough. Not quite sure, but it came out fine printing it. I'd print it pretty slow because you don't want it to wobble back and forth, but that's it. So you'll be looking at a grand total of about 27 prints for this, which again, isn't really bad. Uh, it's a really fun project. And once you have everything printed, you'll end up getting stuff that looks something like this. Now I pre-recorded this while I was building it, but I really don't like my audio in this. So I'm gonna actually voice over this and pause it and kind of point to the pieces as they printed. Here you can see the entire base that was printed. Over here you can see the, uh, the four corners. Here are the two plates that I printed. I printed one in a black and one in a silver. I have no idea why, they both got painted anyway. And you can see right here, I'm having a little bit of trouble sliding this plate in. The gray one and the clear one slid in perfect. But once you actually print these and you'll see that channel that I was talking about, just modify it, you can trim down the plates, you can trim down the channel, you just need to get that in there. And I'm not sure if I didn't print it or my file didn't come with it, but there are two alignment pegs here and then two alignment pegs in the bottom of these rods. I ended up using little tabs of metal. I believe you could use pieces of filament or you could just fuse and glue it together. Maybe you can plastic weld on the inside, but know that there are some alignment tabs there to help you get everything sorted. And last here, we have the handle that I'm now showing and flailing all around the screen, but goes together very simple. And then you just bolt it right onto the top. Again, with some pegs, you can screw into it from underneath or just fuse it there forever. But the print came out pretty good. And uh, yeah. Now, I hope the assembly of this makes a lot more sense to you guys on how this is all constructed, the parts you need to print, the electrical system I put into it. So let me reassemble this. And there's the ether, good to go. As for paint, I didn't really do anything special on this one. It's the very standard Rust-Oleum metallic gold that I use on a lot of my props. And then the stone was a little bit trickier because I wasn't sure what color I wanted to use for it. This is a color called oiled rubbed bronze and it's a little hard to get sometimes, but it's a standard Krylon color. It's the same color on my buster sword up there. It's not quite black, but at the right angle, it's like a dark, dark, dark bronze. And it looks really good. I also believe I used it on my Stormbreaker over there. There isn't much in the way of color on this thing. And I believe I used a little bit of a Sharpie to fill in some of those lines for the detail. And then the red light, that's it. That just about does it wrapping this up, guys. This isn't a complicated print. There's a lot of parts that go into it, but once it starts to come together, it's pretty fun to build. Now, obviously with the modifications I met, made to it, I can't hold it by the handle like they did in the movie. I think they held it by the handle in the movie. I don't remember. I think I only saw the movie once. It looks pretty good on the shelf. It has a really nice ominous red glow. And again, you can make this as bright or as dim as you want. You can add your own little features. This thing is hollow. You can do whatever you want with it. Maybe even make a good little hiding spot for, I don't know, like money or something, a cool little piggy bank. If you guys haven't already, if you could subscribe, that'd be really awesome. This is part three of my Project Infinity video series. And obviously there are more coming out. Next up, we're gonna be dealing with the Power Orb from Guardians of the Galaxy. And this thing, I really like. I really like this thing, because if you open it up inside, you can see the Power Stone. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, or you wanna know more about something maybe I didn't cover or I didn't go into detail, please leave a comment down below. I'll gladly try to answer everybody I can and maybe follow up in some video later down the line. Or you can go join the Discord. It's about 4,000 members strong and we talk about cosplay, 3D printing, everything in between, and you can be up there. It's free, why not? Like always guys, thank you so much for watching and you have a good day. No one is going to believe I actually dropped that. Oh my God.